Sharon Sylvia and I live up on that back of the drive. And I'm here tonight to talk about traffic. Teresa decided to give a, to do a traffic study because everyone knows that traffic is the number one problem in Long Island. Traffic counts were conducted on Wednesday, February 24th, 2021. Wednesday is certainly not the busiest day of the month. A Friday might have been a more appropriate day to do uh, a count. Additionally, last year in February, we were still at the height of COVID. The general population was not vaccinated. Sporting and event and entertainment events were closed. Masking and six foot social distancing was required. And all but a few of the counties in Ohio were in a level one public health emergency, including all the surrounding counties. Loveland schools allow students to learn remotely, and restaurants is open or limited to 25% capacity. It should also be noted that two new developments are also going in that play in, into the intersection of West Loveland and 48. 25 townhomes and 30 single family homes, and these were not included at all in the traffic study. Um, the study only, only analyzed the traffic counts during two one hour periods, 7.15 to 8.15 a.m and 4.45 to 5.45 p.m. To get a true picture of the traffic in Loveland, we need to analyze more than two hours. Loveland draws people at all different times of the day, as well as on the weekend, especially in warm weather months. The traffic counts used in this study do not accurately reflect the current conditions, nor are they extensive enough to understand the whole problem and should be discounted. There is, however, some information in the study that we can draw from. Even with reduced traffic because of COVID, the study shows that there will be an additional 2,124 primary new trips per weekday. 2,124 new trips per day, according to their study. Past five trips were not even included in the study, but will result in even more additional traffic. The study shows that a greater percent, 45 versus 30 percent, of traffic will use the O'Bannonville Road entrance, leading straight into downtown Loveland. Everyone knows that the traffic in downtown Loveland is already at a breaking point. With the bike trail crossings, school buses having to stop at railroad crossings, the backups we have that we're already experiencing are already diminishing the quality of life for many residents in part of Claremont and all of Warren County, which is where I live. Neither of these issues are even considered in the study. Oftentimes, when I leave my house and travel south on 48 towards downtown Loveland, the traffic is already backed up to Lyons Road because of the congestion in downtown Loveland. Since not all voices have been, since not all the voices um, could be here tonight due to the fact that this is a holiday and also the beginning of the NCAA basketball tournament, I felt it prudent to share a small sample of quotes on social media from the community about this proposed development. Number one, I live in Oklahoma on a no road, and this makes me sick. Why is Loveland allowing this to happen is ridiculous. Why not make it a park with trails and tons of green space for everyone to enjoy? Loveland does not need this. It's bad enough that historic Loveland has been, been reduced to a restaurant and alcohol strip. This is just, this just kills the quaint community with rich roots and history even more. This isn't progress. This is such a step back. What a sell off. Well, number two, jokingly. It's just a few extra hundred cars trying to navigate our two lane roads and busy crosswalks. No big deal. Three, unbelievable. We left Lawman as a result of a need to move for a new job. Always with the thought when we move back. God awful monstrosity downtown is bad enough. Now, this. Is there any sort of self-reflection going on in the leadership of Loveland? Or adding more traffic to an already overcrowded streets in downtown Loveland? We are at a breaking point. We are already breaking at the seams. This is about the dumbest proposition taken. Not more damn housing. Yes, sure we need more traffic on the roads. There are, we are already getting more and more congested. This is ridiculous. This is, this is about one simple thing, the impact on our near over capacity infrastructure period. Nothing else, just that. Those making these decisions are ignoring these issues. They just want to build something and bring in more taxes. Problem is, that has been a mantra for years, and the traffic continues to get worse. Figure out a traffic pattern that actually works, and then come back and talk about adding more cars to people.
they stand utility in such a I know many people in this community think I'm against development. I'm not against development. I'm against the decisions being made on new developments without the data to understand the impact on infrastructure, specifically, specifically traffic in schools, and the effect on all the taxpayers alone. This development request would be the third development proposal placed in front of this commission for warrant in Claremont County in the last two years. Raymond's only needs to take the steps to slow it down before decisions made have a detrimental, irreversible impact on the east side of the market. The two developments under construction will have a total of 55 homes. This SPD proposal is for 209 homes. This would be a total of 264 new homes on the east side of Lovell, which will have a negative impact on, tra on traffic and schools and getting through downtown Lovell. This SPD needs to be adjusted to the current zoning of low density of one home per acre, estimated to be probably 85 to 90 homes and not 209. We talked about, it was brought up by degrees around, let's deal with the facts. The traffic study that was provided is fundamentally flawed. The traffic study was conducted on February 24th, 2021, and when, when the majority of people working from home and school buses were not being used midway through the pandemic. The study that was provided, was, in fact, was provided showed 874 vehicles in the intersection of Route 48 and Loveland Avenue in the AM rush hour, and 1,122 vehicles at this same intersection in the PM rush hour. This traffic count does not account for the 55 new homes in Warren County. Plus, the study shows a negative 19% traffic flow reduction during the pandemic. And applying a reduction back into the traffic study for post-pandemic adjustments, we're looking at 1,079 vehicles in the AM and 1,385 vehicles in the PM or shower at the same intersection for a total of 2,464 cars in the AM total vehicles. This does not include the proposed SPD for 209 homes with additional traffic. Let's take a moment to consider traffic impact at another degrees development close to Loveland with over 200 homes in Elliott Farms. This new development has caused traffic congestion issues at the intersection of Columbia Road and Davis Road. This community has complained very loudly to Deerfield Township and to Warren County about the traffic issues and congestion. Deerfield Township and Warren County are stepping forward to construct a roundabout at the intersection at that intersection at an estimated cost of 2.2 million. Has Loveland done any traffic studies independently to understand the impact on the development decision? and with ideas and estimated cost to resolve. With this type of development, what is the return on the investment on this SPD with 209 homes to the citizens of Lowe? I'm asking you to slow down, request data and studies from the city so that you can make an informed decision. I would be very disappointed if you approve this SPD this evening without taking the time to ask questions gather more information for the site. Number two, the special planning district is approved 
Loveland is turning over decision making for our city to a group of developers and strangers. They will not be impacted by the increased traffic, the cost of developing roads, sewer and water to the property, the impact of schools, etc. They will take their money and leave their residents, and they will take their money and leave, and residents will be stuck with the consequences. Number three, the specific development gravel has not ever been included in any master plan, including the one that is including the current one. Number four, what will be the financial gain to the city and residents? Will development and gravel be a net gain or a net loss to the city? Who knows? Remember, with so many more houses, we will either need higher taxes to pay for more police and fire, or we all will need to sell greatly reduced services in those two entities, which will happen again. Who knows? Question mark. Number five, Loveland should team with gravel owners to invite multiple suggestions and our developers with new and innovative ideas for that unique precious land. Royal Belt could be turned into something exceptional and rare instead of cookie cutter homes with absolutely nothing special about them. Loveland is better than that. We need to have confidence in Loveland's brand as a unique town. Let's hang on to what makes us different. Several residents have spoken before council with strong, well thought out suggestions about how to better use that property. Let's listen to these imaginative residents like these and at least give their ideas some thought. Finally, why are we even considering a plan that clearly causes so much anger and division in London? I hope that residents do, at the end of the day, overcome posturing and threats by developers' returns. Thank you. Loveland from Indianapolis. This is the second time we lived in Loveland. 
there was no pool to go to. There was no recreational center that loved, uh, you know, that loved, that loved them operate. So that would be a wonderful thing to have. Uh, so anyway, uh, it also helps join the two sides of love. Uh, as stated in your uh, plan, uh, is let's, let's have a west side and east side and, and make this feel like a cohesive uh, city. Uh, there's your chance. Uh, so, anyway, thank you very much uh, for your time. During those 30 years, we've watched the Loveland community grow into a, a beautiful, vibrant, and thriving community. Uh, the annexation of the railroad property is a wonderful gift to the Loveland residents and an opportunity to further enhance the uniqueness of this community. Not by allowing 200 or more homes, but by keeping it low density and maintaining some of the green space of this beautiful property. While green space has environmental and public health benefits, it also has monetary benefits as well. A study by the Carolina Planning Board shows that green space increases the value of properties around it. Another study by the Urban Affairs Board shows that not only do the lots in conservation subdivisions carry a premium, but they also sell faster. These enhanced property values, not only on the gravel property, but the surrounding neighborhoods as well, mean higher taxable land values and larger tax base for the cities. So please look at the drillable property through the lens of quality versus quantity. Keep it zoned low density and be good stewards of this beautiful piece of land. Thank you.
to make a profit because if they don't make a profit, they're not in business. And you're not moving up or down or sideways if you don't have people like her. So I commend you for that. But unfortunately, you're carrying a lightning rod for a community that has internal problems and have had them for years. This traffic issue didn't come up overnight. The school system didn't just suddenly appear. Did we forget that we just fired our superintendent and the other leadership because of the way that they misused their authority and a great opportunity to enhance our school system? I mean, and I have two uh, teachers in the family, so no slings and arrow. I'm a supporter of the school system. But there's a lot of internal problems the city has never wrestled with. And here comes Grailville and Breeze trying to reach an agreement between two parties managed by zoning rules and regulations and your approval. And then all of the community that, that you know is coming to grips with all these issues at the current level. And, um, and, and really, you're inheriting all of Loveland's problems, and, and they really shouldn't fall on your shoulders. You're just trying to do business, and we want them to do business. This real estate agent also wants you to do business. But um, there are a lot of issues to be looked at. I think you have a big, uh, you know, I think the people speaking to you have to be heard. I think the issues of the sewer, the traffic, uh, is an issue that long has existed in, in this community. It needs to be fixed, it needs to be addressed by the city of Lowell. Why aren't we correcting these problems? And the schools, you know, that's a whole different thing. Why they made bad decisions, and we had to get rid of superintendents, you know, now we're left with the best interest of problems that continue to grow. And, um, and I think there are solutions out there. I hope you. Uh, will help guide the community in resolving some of those. The traffic study is a glaring problem. The sewer system is a glaring problem. You're not going to fix it. I don't care who comes in. Someone is going to buy a girl and they're going to develop it. Loveland really wants 
the negatives that are associated with this project. Keep it at the RLD level. Thank you. It is 
not a vision for the future, but is mindful of the power of beauty and its force in our lives. Or of green space and the highest good of all the citizens of our town.